welcome to another sort of tutorial, right? My name is Michelle White, of course. I'm the Creative Project Manager over at Reach. So before I dig into the playlist application, I just want to take a time out and make sure that we understand the difference between the media library and playlist. And I apologize if you just got done watching the media library, this might be a little bit redundant. So feel free, feel free to kind of, you know, fast forward here, but it's really important because we're talking about workflow. And so the only reason why, again, you would use the media library application is really for three things, right? The first thing is if you're going to use our backend tool that allows you to create content, right? We call that the announcement editor. Second reason is if you're going to use Canva, and then the third reason is just to simply find that asset, right? The media library itself, it's just like one big library of all the sort of assets or content that's been created or has been added into the system. It's really just like one big library of that. A lot of you are going to start your workflow here in the playlist application. Here is where you can drag and drop, right? You can change the order. You can create playlists, delete playlists. You're really having full control of what's running on that signage. So with no time to be wasted here, let's jump into this. All right, so what you're seeing here, you guys, is what I call a landing page. Um, essentially, it's going to show all the playlists that you have access to or all the playlists that you've created. Um, when you are sort of coming on board, obviously, we're going to create these playlists for you. Or if you're doing a conversion, we'll kind of create these for you. But again, you've got access to really remove them, add new ones, modify the name. Um, and of course, add the content within. Shared playlists over here on the left side. Now, depending on how you're set up, some of our organizations, or I should say larger organizations, they have um, sort of marketing or, or corporate who wants to add content to all their players and all, all their screens, right? And in addition to obviously what you're adding, if your setup is similar to that, you might see some shared playlists. And shared playlists, again, it's just going to allow you to see what's running in there. You don't have access to add or remove or anything like that. It's really what we call like a, a read only uh, permission or a read only um, access. So if you were to click into one of these, of course, you're just going to see the content. That's that's really it. Delete playlists. Um, again, you know, with multiple people sort of in the system, right? There might be a case where a playlist accidentally gets deleted. If that's the case, obviously it will be stored into this sort of section. Um, it will stay here for 30 days. After 30 days, then it does get deleted from the, the system. So going back to my playlist here. So again, as I mentioned, this is where you can sort of manage and control your playlist. Um, if I hit the box up here in the column, this is going to select all. And then again, if I click it again, it's going to de deselect. So as I select a playlist, again, I can select one and select multiple. Um, we have what we call actions up here, right? We have some commands. The first one is add content, which we'll dig into that in just a sec, of course. And then, of course, I can delete. So I can delete multiple. I can delete one. And then, again, share playlists. And that's just going to go back to sort of, you know, what your setup is. You may or may not need to share uh, a playlist. All right, so I'm going to deselect and sort of reselect. Um, so if I click on one of them, I'm getting this playlist detail. So to edit a playlist, there's three ways we can edit a playlist. Obviously, we can click the button that says Edit Playlist. I can double click into this row. Or if I go to the three dots, there's another one right here where it says Edit Playlist. So again, three ways to add, or not add content, but see what's running in that playlist. File name, of course, this is where I can change the name. Uh, loop duration, that's how long, obviously, the playlist is. And then total count, which is nice, because then you can see, oh, okay, I've got eight active, I've got 10 inactive, and, and so on. Who it was created by, and then owner. Um, again, the owner part is going to be important if you are sharing a playlist, right? So if I'm sharing this corporate info to, you know, 50 different facilities, um, it's going to be a nice little visual for me just to kind of see that information. All right, going back to the three dots here. Um, so security property, this is going to allow you to hide playlists from certain users. So of course, you know, there are situations that come up where there might be multiple users, you know, managing, you know, different playlists. And just to kind of keep it simple for that user, we might want to hide the playlist that they basically are not managing. Um, so this sort of function is going to give you that. And then re remove expired items. So when assets, right, or, or content, they expired, we don't automatically remove them from the playlist. We actually keep them in there. 
And so again, based on sort of, you know, client scenarios and, and workflow, some people want them to automatically remove. Some people, you know, obviously want to keep them in there. And so we built this functionality that just allows you to remove them, you know, uh, on the fly. So if you're sitting there being like, oh, yeah, I could see myself using that feature, just know that that's what that's going to do. All right, so adding content, right? So when we talk about content, we talked about in obviously previous tutorials, content can be a lot of things. It can be JPEGs, PNGs, movie files. Um, you know, maybe you're using our backend system, maybe you're using Canva, right? Content can be a lot of things. Depending on sort of that workflow, to add content, you're really going to hit this button. Um, now, you don't need to click into the playlist to add content, right? You don't necessarily need to do that. A lot of our clients are going to stay in this landing page when they're adding content because really two reasons. First off, it allows them to click multiple playlists, right? Or I can click multiple playlists and then I can assign an asset, a single asset or multiple assets to these playlists. Um, and obviously just workflow wise, right? It's, it's less clicks if I can just stay in here and kind of just add my content quickly. All right, so I'm gonna check on this one, just the internal one, and then we're gonna hit the button. All right, so this modal sword pops up. Now, keep in mind, you guys, this pop-up, this is just grabbing stuff from the media library. So at any point, I can literally drag and drop in here as well. So if you're creating content again in Photoshop or, or PowerPoint, right, or you know, you're using sort of a different software to create it, um, you really can just drag and drop in here. You don't need to go to the media library. You don't need to drag in there, then go to the playlist. Like that's just too much work, right? So we can actually just kind of add our content right in here. Um, the media picker right down here on the left side, that's just sort of organizing and sort of um, helping you guys filter assets. So again, maybe it's like six months down the road and you're like, ah, I uploaded that video. Like where's that video? Um, you know, cruising through all your assets might, you know, might be too much for you. But if you were just to click on video, it's just gonna go right into all the video formats. All right, so we'll go back to all assets. Um, other things to kind of keep in mind here. So again, if I do click on an asset, I have this little arrow that's gonna give me some asset details. This may or may not, right, be important to you, but know that it is there. Um, we do have different views as well. So some people, they love this sort of, you know, the standard view, the thumbnail view. Um, some people want just the condensed view which would look something like this, where again, it's just really removing the thumbnail and just kind of giving you the name. Otherwise, again, we have the tile view as well. So a couple different options, but know that as a default, you're just gonna be on that standard view. Now, if you have, again, PowerPoint or PDF, something with multiple slides, we do have that expand arrow, which is gonna allow you to see all the individual slides within that, again, that PowerPoint or, or PDF. Um, when it comes to our publishing, what's nice is you kind of have some options when we're dealing with multiple slides. And so what I mean by that is I can say, hey, you know what, I want all my slides, meaning by myself selecting this, I'm grabbing all the slides in this PowerPoint. And I can then go to the next step, which is going to say like, hey, I want all the slides to run, you know, on Friday between 8 and 4. Or the other option is if I do click that expand, I can say, all right, you know what, I want image two and image three and four uh, to only run on Thursday. And then I can kind of come back in here and say, okay, no, now this time I want page one, page five and six to run on Tuesdays. So again, you have that flexibility where you can choose to run individual slides, or again, like I said earlier, you can just choose the whole PowerPoint. All right, so I'm just gonna select a couple, again, just so we can kind of go to that next sort of page and I'll hit okay. All right, and so this is where our publishing setting is being established. So it's gonna tell you how many assets, right, you have selected, just in case you've, you've forgotten. Um, if you click on the plus, it's gonna show you those assets as well, which is kind of nice. Um, start date, start time, right, all this kind of fun stuff. So as a default, we're assuming that you're gonna run this 24 seven. Um, but of course, as you sort of modify, right, you make changes, it's going to sort of, you know, it help you indicate like forms or certain sections that need to be filled out. And so that's kind of why I always say like, hey, it's yelling at you just because, hey, you need to fill out this, this end date. Um, again, so we are having that flexibility where we can sort of schedule when we want it to run. As a default, you guys, we just have over the time, I've just kind of felt that 10 seconds, and obviously it's from client feedback, is really a good amount of time for any of your end users to digest that information. But again, you can adjust that to, you know, whatever you want. 
If you selected a video, um, the system actually knows how long the video is going to be. Um, so there wouldn't be anything that you would need to do here uh, if you selected a video. And then of course, as you start times, um, as you establish your, your times, um, you can then choose if you only want to run on a certain day or multiple days. Um, we do have this advanced option, which is kind of nice, where you can have it sort of run at different times within a day. So for an example, let's just say I unselect this, I say, okay, Monday, I want it to run from, you know, 8 a.m. to, I guess we'll just say an hour just to kind of keep it simple, 8 a.m., and I hit okay. But then I say, oh, you know what? I actually want to re-pick that up. So I want to pick it up again, and I want it to run from, you know, maybe 3 p.m. to, we'll do 6 p.m. just to do it a little bit longer. And so then again, that's kind of what that advanced version is where you can have it, you know, run at different times through throughout a single day. All right, so once you've established your settings, right, you're gonna hit publish to playlist. All right, so that's how you, again, you can publish to a playlist. So let's kind of click into a playlist and just kind of see what functionality is in there. All right, so before we dig into just functionality, let's kind of just go around the world a little bit, um, just kind of with some functionality. So to leave this playlist, like to get out of it, you can actually just click on the playlist management. That will bring you right back to our landing page. Down in the left corner, this is what we call pagination. So again, you might have multiple pages depending on how much content you have in this playlist. On the right side here, down below, we have total playlist count, and then we have the show the number. 50 is your default, of course, but again, you could sort of change this if you if you wanted to. Top right corner, almost got my lefts and rights confused there. Top right corner, of course, we got some three dots. Um, copy elsewhere, which means that maybe you want to select one or two assets and you want to copy it to another playlist. And then manage column, right? So again, here are all of our columns. You're going to see all the columns as a default. Of course, you can come in here and sort of customize or manage them. Search playlist, right? I can search for a particular asset. Right here, we've got three different views. So we've got the standard view, we've got the condensed view, and then we've got what we call a timeline view. So again, just depends what kind of works for you. Um, filter by status. So as a default, when you click into a playlist, we're only going to show you the active assets. Here again is where you can filter and say, all right, well, I really want to see which ones are active, which ones are expired. Um, again, this is where you can sort of manage that. We have change order as well, and then cut items. So one question we kind of always get is like, which one should I use or why is there two? You know, is there, you know, a wrong way? Um, it really just depends guys what works for you. Some of our clients, they love just the simple drag and drop, right? You just kind of move assets around. And as I'm sort of, again, moving it around, just a simple drag and drop. All right, if I hit save order, it will readjust. All right, another way is some people love just cut and paste. And the reason we have that cut and paste is because we have a pagination, right? I want to cut you know, an asset from page one, and I want to paste it in page five. If that's something that's like sort of your workflow, again, it's just like works for you. How you would do that is you would select an asset. So I'm just going to select a single asset. I'm going to hit cut item. All right, I'm getting sort of a notification that it's cut. I'm getting a plus one up here. And then I would just scroll to, let's just say it's right here. I'm going to scroll to the three dots. I'm going to go come down here where it says paste here. And then I'm literally just going to drag and drop either above or below where I want to paste that and hit OK. And then you can see instantly it's it's adjusted. So again, the change order, the cut items, there's no right, there's no wrong. It just really comes down to what works with you. All right, so we obviously can add content here as well. Um, again, as mentioned, most people will add their content in that landing page because that allows them to select multiple playlists to, to add content. But again, if for whatever reason you do need to add something, um, you have that functionality as well. Grouped items. So again, if I select kind of one or multiple things, right, I have delete and then I can copy to this playlist, right? And then I have group items. So the way I explain group items is I just think of it as like a folder. It's the way my mind kind of works where I'm creating a folder. I'm going to create a name and then I'm going to add these sort of assets into that 
quote unquote folder. Um, I'll kind of give you what a visual of what that sort of looks like. So this is what a group is going to look like. So again, if I sort of minus it, these are the assets that are running in my group. Um, so again, we'll kind of create one together just so you can kind of see it. But again, if I select multiple, I'll just select these first three. I hate group item. I'll just call it Michelle and then I hit okay. All right, here it is, Michelle, it's active and these are the assets in. So the big question is, is like, why would I use group items, right? Like, I completely get that. Um, it just depends on how you're set up. So for an example, we talked about earlier, earlier where there might be like shared playlists or like an organization set up where marketing or corporate might be sort of adding content to your uh, players as well. So meaning that you have your own playlist, right? And then corporate has their own playlist. And usually how it works, you guys, when we have two playlists like in a in a timeline, it's kind of just um, kind of doing like every other, meaning like corporate's content's gonna play one, then your content, then corporate content, then your content, right? It kind of goes back and forth, back and forth. Now we have settings obviously where you can set time, meaning like, okay, corporate content's gonna play for five minutes. After that five minutes, then it's your turn and you're gonna play for, for two minutes. Um, so again, we have sort of different timelines, which again, you can ask us a little bit more. We'll kind of go into to depth there, but depending on your setup, okay? So again, going back to my story, we've got corporate that is adding content and you are adding content as well. It's kind of doing that one-one ratio, right? One corporate, one you, one corporate, one you. You might want to create a group because when your group runs, it is going to play all three of these back to back. Verse, if we don't have a group, it would show one corporate, one test content, one corporate, this pet uh, content, one corporate, this trans transition test, right? So it, again, that's the reason why you would have a, a group. All right, so let's talk about some more functionality here. Um, again, I can physically active, inactive, right? End date, right, if I click on the calendar, that brings a shortcut where I can sort of modify when I want this content to run. If I go to my three dots here, I can edit the playlist item. So again, that's gonna bring the moto up as well. So it just depends, some people, you know, having that little icon there um, just kind of helps visually let you know that like, hey, you can edit here. Otherwise, again, you can do it right here. View in media library. So this is gonna bring a shortcut. It's gonna actually gonna bring us out of the playlist and it's going to bring us into the media library. Some people want to sort of have that functionality. Maybe they need to go to the media library. Um, if you're creating content, you know, you know, using again, like Photoshop or PowerPoint, a, a majority of you are probably not going to ever use this functionality. Where it gets used, you guys, is if you're using our content editor, meaning you're using our backend system to create content, you know, we have animations in there. Um, maybe you just want to see what that looks like at a large preview. You want to make modifications. This is really why you would sort of use this functionality. Swap media library item. So this is kind of nice because maybe you want to keep all the publishing the same, right? But really you just want to switch out that sort of JPEG or that PNG or that slide. Um, swap media library item is going to allow you to do that. All right, all right, you guys, that is the end of our tutorial. So as always, if there's something that was unclear or maybe you have more questions, definitely reach out to us. As always, you guys, I appreciate you watching these videos. I really hope that they're successful and sort of continue to help you learn the system. Have a great day. Thank you again.